Hi guys, hope you can all uh, hear me loud and clear. I'm sorry for the delay. Uh, there was a little bit of a technical problem, um, and I'm unable to get my webcam. Uh, but I hope you can hear the audio so, uh, loud and clear. Let's just wait for uh, about five minutes um, until everyone has joined uh, this live call. So welcome uh, the new viewers. We're going to wait two minutes and uh, I'll be starting my quick presentation on the story of Igniter Space. All right, I think we have uh, some new uh, comers who have joined the call. So if you guys can hear loud and clear, please uh, drop in a comment uh, saying that the audio is clear, or else let's get the technicalities sorted out. All right, thank you, thank you, Navi. 
Okay, so since the five minutes is up, I'm going to start uh, my presentation for you guys today. Uh, we'll I'll be talking to you about the story of uh, Igniter Space. Um, first and foremost, I want to ask you all a question. How many of you guys have uh, a black colored thick notebook with you? It doesn't have to be a black book. Um, but but um, I really wished I had a webcam here so I could show you my book. But I call this book uh, my moleskin of ideas. This book is actually filled with a lot of different uh, ideas, stories, and different concepts uh, that I've come up with uh, in my time. Uh, and most of these ideas in this book has never, uh, although they are some crazy product and business ideas, never seen the light of the real world. But today, uh, we'll be uh, sharing a story of one of these ideas which jumped out uh, of these pages into the real world. Uh, and that is the story of Igniter Space. Uh, so, so it all started uh, right here uh, when I joined 99X Technology as an intern uh, back quite some time ago. Uh, and I was put into work with uh, this amazing gentleman called Chatra De Silva, whom you can see uh, over there with that plate of uh, nice food. And uh, Chatra put me into this uh, team called... Uh, uh, Mulgala, uh, yeah, you heard that right, Mulgala. And uh, it was actually a software product team uh, that uh, was developing a brand new product. And uh, Chakra actually gave the entire project to me. I don't know why he did that. He had a large amount of trust that he placed on me. I, I think so. I like think think so. But in just a couple of months' time, I started managing it. Uh, team of three to four uh, other people in this project and the project turned from just a uh, business idea into a fully fledged startup called Ernsha uh, and it was uh, it was there till very recently uh, and we merged it into something else but my point being this was the start of my journey uh, of my career um, as an engineer as an entrepreneur Not only did I uh, get myself involved in the technologies, the, the technicalities of the internship at 99X, also I got myself in, involved in so many different aspects of the organization itself. Um, uh, whether it was arranging university sessions, so I traveled all around Sri Lanka from the north to the hill country, to the south, uh, to share my experience, to share this short amount of knowledge that I gained in um, my short time at 99X Technology. And I arranged a lot of, organized a lot of internal sessions. Uh, this photograph is a session on design thinking that we organized with AOD. And I got myself involved in a lot of speaking. I love to speak. Uh, when I'm not uh, reading a book uh, or doing any of my other hobbies, you can see me speaking somewhere. And a lot of events were organized from Columbus Jaya Conference to Candy IT Week and so forth. Just one year of that internship that I spent at 99X Technology, I absolutely learned a lot. But the best thing that happened at 99X Technology was that I met this gentleman here, my buddy, my business partner now, uh, Hase Tiagahavita, at the time, and he still is the CTO of... Uh, 99x technology why i loved to spend time with hasid was a because he's a great leader and he always makes sure that uh, he uh, encourages and motivates everyone around him and two i shared a similar interest with him and that interest was uh, something called tinkering tinkering uh, by what, what i mean by when I said tinkering, it's not exactly the uh, getting, repairing a dented car, but it's taking different things, making them, building them together, and trying different new things. What I didn't know when I met him, uh, met Hasid, was that this was him a uh, long time back. He used to have a tinkering lab light right at his home where he tinkered away. He has uh, 
Um, I recently I spoke to Hasid's father and he, he shared these experiences with me by telling uh, how Hasid used to always blow the uh, electric circuits at home by experimenting. And myself, well, I am from a different generation from Hasid and I enjoyed my share of cartoons when I was young. Uh, Jimmy Neutron was my favorite cartoon and I'm pretty sure I share uh, this with a lot of you out there. Well, what, uh, as, as a young boy, I remember myself looking at Jimmy's school uh, creations and trying to build, uh, I don't know, uh, automatic this and automatic that. And Jimmy's work, the Jimmy Neutron's work actually really, uh, really, really inspired me to do so many things at home, which eventually led me to our one time uh, taking apart this engine of a Cessna 152, uh, taking off the pistons of one of the cylinders, cleaning it and putting it back. So, I mean, I was a thinker myself and I still am. So the question was, what should Hasid and I do? Where can we test out or where can we practice our hobby? Should we have a workshop like this in our garage where we have all the equipment needed for us to tinker and come up with new things, break things, build things, um, and so forth. At the same time, we were wondering how we are going to uh, enjoy our times with our hobbies of tinkering. Hasid had another problem, or rather Hasid, uh, I, could, I can't call them problems because they are sweet little kids. Dinat, the small one, and Dinu, the, the elder one. So Hasid wanted to share his passion in tinkering, his passion in um, making things with these two kids of his. And he was looking for a platform where Dinat and Dinudur can go and experience making things, breaking things, and innovating. But Unfortunately, we were well, we weren't able to find such a place. So, so both of us are now in a situation where we want some kind of a place where we can think of, and at the same time teach these kids about making uh, things. And this is when we came across this concept of maker spaces. And maker spaces is my favorite word up to today. A maker space is an environment where people can get together to think up, to be creative, to come up with innovations, to solve real world problems. It's so much more superior than tinkering. But still, the essence of it all, making. A space to make, a maker space. Well, Hasid is always a very progressive guy. And I, fell in love with the concept of maker spaces as I researched on them. And I had a discussion with him over the phone about maker spaces and uh, what we could do around it. Should we have a maker space somewhere? Little did I know that when I visited Hasid the next weekend, that he would have converted his living room into a maker space. And that's exactly what he had done. He had uh, ripped off his sofa, his TV set and whatever is there in a normal a generic uh, living room, household, household living room. And he has converted that space into a makeshift maker space with a uh, couple of tables and his favorite people in the world, two kids and his father were there, who is also a big fan of tinkering to this day. And this was when we realized that if he really dream of something, we can achieve it. And our dream of actually having a space to tinker and at the same time teach these two kids how to do it and build that passion in them resulted in us having a maker space to spend the weekends. But what we did next is what and how Ignited Space was born. We realized that there could be a business model here. And we did something called a financial feasibility. We, we determined if we could turn this concept of 
having a space, a make a space, and getting kids together to build things and innovate could uh, viably turn into a potential revenue generating business. So this financial feasibility that we did helped us understand that this is possible. And thus was born a uh, entity called Kids Ignite. So Kids Ignite was uh, the name it's before Ignite Space. This is the first name we called our Makerspace. And uh, we love this name, we still do. So what Kids Ignite did was we put out a Facebook post saying, any kids out there who would like to build things over the weekend, here's, your, here's the address. This is the Sri Lanka's first Makerspace. Come here over the weekends. And this was the result. We had a bunch of energetic young small kids who came with their parents who came with one reason and that is to build things and this was how Hasid and I and our founding members spent our weekends we would go get together on Friday evenings and we would discuss what sort of activities or what sort of creations we were going to do with the kids and over the weekend we collected materials required and we gave these materials to the kids. We got them to tinker away, to build these fantastic little creations. What we realized at this point is it's not the tech, the, te uh, the, the it's not about how advanced the technology should be to do a creation. It's actually seeing a complete creation. So for example, these things that these little kids are holding are small fans. I still remember designing this fan with a couple of popsicle sticks and a small motor and a propeller. It's a thrill that these kids got in uh, creating their first end-to-end -end, uh, yeah, device or creation. Now that was amazing to see. After we saw this success, of course, we uh, as people, as persons, we had an enormous amount of self-satisfaction. When we see those smiling faces of these kids, and mind you, this is just one group of kids. We had three groups of this kind of kids, of three different age groups. So altogether, we had almost more than 50, 50 plus kids in Hasid's living room spending their weekends tinkering and building things in our makerspace. We kept on speaking to parents. We kept on talking to them. These curious parents who had brought their kids to Ignite Space, uh, Kids Ignite back then, when the concept of makerspace was essentially not known at all, we really wanted to pick their brains and see what they were thinking. And what we found out is that parents, in general, warn their kids to be like this. They want their kids to be creators. They want them to make something, build something of their own. But what parents find it hard is that this is the sad reality. Technology is a great thing. Technology has made so many things possible. But unfortunately, technology is also like letting our kids or making our kids lose the passion to be creative because technology is readily available kids become consumers rather than creators therefore this was a need that every parent had a creative method of education and furthermore when we did a bit of a statistical analysis where sri lanka was in terms of innovation we saw the results weren't that good weren't happy at all so bloomberg hasn't even listed us in the innovation index and Korea, uh, sorry, uh, Korea is a Trump run rank. And in the global innovation index, we are at position 90, which I don't think is acceptable. Uh, the trends actually show that countries with a strong maker culture find it to be on top of the innovation index. And forget the innovation index. What I'm talking about is the economy. The higher the innovation, the higher the economy. I'm pretty sure uh, China is in, or Korea is in the top of the innovation index because, well, they have a high economy because 
they manufacture, they have a strong maker identity. So this is where we lack. So that's when we got the backing of uh, industry titan, uh, Mano Seca, uh, who is who was this, who was and is the CEO of uh, Ignite uh, of uh, 99x Technology and also the current chairman of uh, Lankan Angel Network to help us launch our first financial, our first commercial venture, uh, Ignite Space, or uh, our first financial, uh, our first commercial maker space uh, on a large scale. And this was in Narayan Peter, uh, and it's still uh, our biggest maker space. We have so many kids coming in uh, to come up with their own innovations. So what we did, we, had a, we saw what we'd done over the weekend uh, in getting a bunch of kids who were interested in tinkering into Hasid's uh, 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 living room to build things actually turned out to be a great commercial business. But we came there by doing a great financial feasibility and we had a look at how this would fit into the existing education market. But uh, everything became positive and with investments from Mano and Hasid and all of our partners, we were able to make this a reality. And this is uh, yet again the happy faces of kids when they tinker away. And this kids right here, I believe, are building a propeller car of some sort. When we did all of this, uh, we attracted a lot of attention from the industry, from schools, from government agencies, and so forth. And we were invited to Canby along with Slasco to conduct a maker session for a bunch of kids who had selected, gotten selected uh, for uh, uh, original innovation competition. And this is the, the bright young kids over here. When we were here, we learned something. We saw when we gave this making activity to these kids, we gave them a challenge of building a vehicle that can go on both land and water. We saw how they use their innovation thinking mindsets to apply here and make it a market ready product. So when we went back in Colombo, we got our notebooks out, we queued the mole skin, as I like to call it, and we started uh, uh, generating ideas. And this was when we came up with the first innovation curriculum model for Ignited Space. So before this, we were just teaching technology, rather giving kids the experience to try out technology. After our visit to Candy, it changed our mind. We were not going to just teach technology from today. We were going to teach kids about innovation, about problem solving, about solving real world problems. So instead of giving the kids a technical problem, we, we started giving them a real world problem. By doing so, we were able to ignite a sense uh, a correct characteristic in these kids called empathy, which was never ever ignited before. And it's not even ignited in our current traditional education system. Empathy is a kid's ability to get into the shoes of someone and identify the problems or the pain points that they are facing. And thereby, when they have the technical knowledge, the technical exposure and know-how how to do it, they can develop innovation to solve these actual real world problems. So this was the concept that we developed. And so many people contributed to developing this innovation curriculum. I can see some of them are also connected to this call, like uh, Nimas, uh, uh, who is our chief uh, research engineer. And this is Ignited Space now. We, by April this year, that's uh, this month, we are at five branches. Naran Pitabo is our first, then we rolled out to Gampa, then we rolled out to Nigambo, Moratu, and we opened uh, Candy recently. And Gaul is just 
a mile away, I would say. So the sustainable financial model that we developed for Igniter Space helped us to spawn a new branch every six months. At the same time, we were increasingly giving this concept of innovation education to more and more and more kids as we branched out more and more. At the same time, Hasit and I and our team, we had a huge mandate, a huge uh, personal uh, agenda to make this creative education not only available for people who can afford it, but also to all kids out there. When we did our research into this kind of innovation curriculum, innovation uh, methodology available in Sri Lanka and of course in the region, uh, we weren't really surprised, but what we saw is there wasn't such a strong model out there. So what we've developed is actually novel. It's actually a unique education model, which mind you gives some uh, fantastic results. So what we did was we started organizing school workshops. Uh, we went to uh, schools in different parts of the country to provide free of charge innovation workshops where we talked to the kids about identifying real world problems and using technology to come up with solutions for these problems. When we did this, we came across another business opportunity. We were uh, reached by private international schools to set up their own maker spaces and provide them with a curriculum. At this point, we did not pivot our existing business model, but rather we ventured out into a new business venture, which is a business to business, a B2B offering. So we set up the makerspace and we provided the school with innovation kits. And this is what we did. And soon followed US Embassy, uh, who gave us a project of launching a makerspace in their center in Colombo and in their center in Jaffna. And this was executed perfectly. At this time, we, ho we held a service business called Ignited Space. Oh, by the way, uh, before I get into this, I think I should explain to you why we call Ignited Space and why the name changed. Well, uh, we had a certain problem with the existing name uh, in terms of kids, not want to be called kids. <laughs> so we had to uh, change it to Ignited Space. But anyway, it's Ignited Space now. Well, with Ignited Space being the service business and uh, the B2B being a product that we uh, supply to organizations, we also had another gap. So if you can remember, Hasit and my mandate was to actually make creative education available for every child in the world. So what if a child cannot access our makerspace physically? What if uh, he doesn't live in the vicinity of one of these branches? What if he lives in Jaffna or in Gaul or in Ratapur or Kurunagala? What? We are we're potentially leaving them out. What do we do? Give the mole skin. We got our book again, we brainstormed, and we came up with this, a new business idea involving the same kits. We called it Ignited Bee because a bee basically goes around and you know, pollinates and ignites things. So Ignited Bee, uh, as you may already have guessed, is a subscription box which contains these innovation activities that the kids can get delivered right to their doorsteps. And this was uh, an enormous success. And we, had, we delivered kids to different parts of Sri Lanka and even we exported many outside Sri Lanka as well. And while we were doing all of this with a fantastic team, we were recognized by uh, different organizations where we got several accolades. And well, we realized we were actually having a tremendous amount of social impact in everything that we were doing. Uh, and yes, this is our recognition on the newspapers and such. 
so time passed. Ignited Space was a fantastic success, as you can see. Many, we were working with a lot of organizations, we were working with schools, we were working with uh, the government and different entities to make this creative education propagate more and more and more. So at the same time, as a business, we were thinking of how do we reach out to the mass. So Ignite the Space Center can hold 40 kids at one time. Ignite a B, sorry, Ignite a Space Center, one branch could hold 40 kids at one time. What if, again, the kids are unable to order a kit online uh, and come to one of our branches? How do we reach out to them? And that is the mass market, mind you. So that's when we developed yet another product called the Creator Kits. So Creator Kits is something really new that we haven't essentially launched yet, but it's something that will be launched pretty soon. But this itself is an innovation kit that kids can buy right off any, anywhere, either a supermarket or a fashion retail store or wherever, or a toy store, or wherever they are. They can buy this innovation kit, they can tinker with it, they can build things, they can share their experiences, they can explore the different concepts they learn, and so forth. And the next business idea that we had from our moleskins, from our books, was actually a book called Innovator Diary. So this diary contains innovation activities that we provide the schools to do the innovation education. So you guys can see how a simple problem that Hasid and I faced in uh, different ways potentially turned into a revenue generating commercial business in just two years of time. And all we just did was follow our instincts. When we got the idea of finding a place to tinker away. Uh, we did our research and we came up with the maker space model. And then when we had the problem of uh, not having enough space in Hasid's uh, backyard or, or in his living room, we solved that problem by going into a, a larger commercial space. And then when we had requests coming from uh, different parts of the city, uh, country, we decided to branch out. And then when he had requests for people from uh, uh, the outstations for this kind of education, he came up with Ignited B. And so forth. The story goes on and on and on. We followed our instincts. And it led us to this point where we are trying to catch all the fish in the sea, but with different hooks. Uh, Recently, I was watching uh, this movie called Forrest Gump. I mean, Forrest Gump, Forrest Gump tries to catch shrimp. And uh, first what he does is he has his one boat that goes around trying to catch shrimp. And he catches certain amount of shrimp. But there's a whole sea of shrimp out there. When he puts 12 boats out there, he catches more shrimp. My point of the story is that our C here is the audience that we have designed this creative curriculum for. And the different fishing methods that we use are our different business models. We use the service business to bring them in together and deliver creative education. We use Ignite B to send this, uh, this innovation kits right to their doorstep. We use uh, our a business to business model to go to schools and conduct the creative sessions. And we have a book again for schools and we have a retail kit for anyone out there who wants to have this sort of creative education. And this is how an idea, just an idea turned into a revenue generating business. And the best part of this is that we all learned as we went on 
how to manage a service business, how to manage a product business, and most importantly, the byproduct of all of this is that we were able to build an amazing team. So finally, it's, it's about people. It's the people that you meet along the way in a journey and the people that you help develop along the way. In our two years of time, I've met many, many different individuals from different domains who have come to contribute to Ignite Space's success in different, in different, different ways. And this is, you know, some of these team members you can see over here. Uh, so before we open up for questions, I want to close uh, today's session by giving you a few pointers about my learnings in uh, the journey of Ignite Space. In my belief, the Sri Lankan startup ecosystem is very different to Silicon Valley. And if you try to do things the Silicon Valley way, in my opinion, maybe we won't succeed. So uh, I'm going to share a few things that I learned along my way in the Ignite Space journey that you guys can choose to apply. These are just hypothesis, or these are just my ideologies, you can take it if you would like. One uh, is what I want to talk to you about bootstrapping. Bootstrapping is what we did when we did not uh, you know, have any money to, uh, uh, or rather we, when we were actually launching uh, our first commercial makerspace. So bootstrapping is about funding your business venture by yourself. Why bootstrapping is important in Sri Lanka is because we do not have a bigger, a bigger market such as Silicon Valley to take in money from an investor or rather uh, uh, external money, money that is not yours and spent. Rather, a better business model or a, a, sorry, a better way to do it is by bootstrapping. Uh, bootstrapping is, for example, when I when we came up with this concept of Ignite Space, what we did was we spent a few we spent a, uh, a little bit of money and we converted an existing living room of uh, of assets into a maker space by spending a little bit of money and we validated our idea before we went in to a small round of investment that we reached we raised internally without going for a large institutional investor. So bootstrapping is one of the most important things that in my mind Sri Lankan entrepreneurs have to keep in their mind. Two, when you apply or when you try to apply a idea into a actual real world business, the first thing that you need to do is to do your financial feasibility. What you need to do is you get an idea, you queue your mold skin, you get a book out, and you work out what you're going to make in your first year, what your valuation is going to be in your first year, and then you take the smart decision if I'm going to get into this business venture or not. So you can see that we've launched multiple different business ventures in these past two years, and for every single one of them, we did that. We, we figured out the financial feasibility. And that's of utmost importance that you guys need to have. And thirdly, um, as I said when I opened up this slide, it's about people. People are the biggest assets that you can build. So when you launch a, soft, a startup, the biggest thing or the best thing that you can do is to get together with the team and build it. Um, all right, guys, so I just want to close this session now. I would like to thank all of you for being a part of this live session. Uh, uh, I know it's quite rainy for some parts of the country. Right now, I'm in our makerspace in Nigambo, um, where there was a huge rain and it just stopped. I hope it's not flooded outside uh, and I can get home. So I would like to uh, open up for questions. If you guys have any questions for me, please feel free to comment it out, and I would like, uh, and I would be more than happy to answer.
So I'll open up uh, for questions for five minutes of time, and we will end this session. So if you guys have questions, you can please feel free to comment it out. And if you if you do not uh, feel comfortable asking questions here, feel free to email me anytime. I'll just comment out my email address. Please feel free to drop in an email anytime and I'll be happy to help you guys out. Oh, thank you, Manisha. No worries. All right, guys, so it seems like there's no questions today. All right, there's one there. What are the challenges you faced in building the startup? All right, there's a tough one. Well, in my mind, uh, the entire journey is a challenge. The biggest one that I faced so far is not knowing what's ahead. It's a, it's a fairly dumb, uh, dumb answer that, that is. But what I mean is, uh, you can never predict the future. But you can do something. You can prepare for the future. So what I did instead of uh, being unable to predict the future is I developed these two traits in myself called the learnability um, and, of course, uh, my creativity. By learnability, what I actually did was I developed this skill in myself that I was able to learn anything really fast. So by doing that, I was able to mitigate this challenge um, that I faced. The second thing is that I was an absolute beginner uh, to running a business. But I remember one day when I was talking about this with Mano and Haseth, saying that uh, Haseth, uh, I feel like I'm, uh, uh, I'm really unqualified to run uh, this company. Do you think uh, it's going to be a problem in the long run? What he said was, well, I really don't think so. I think you are in a better position because actually the lesser you know, the easier it is to experiment. And uh, I, I could agree more to what he said because the less you know, uh, the, you do not know the risks of what you do, so you would do it anyway. Um, if I make any sense there. So starting a, uh, running a startup is all about experimenting. And you should always try new things in order to achieve success. So this is uh, one of the other challenges that I faced. And then, of course, building and running a team is very hard. It's very challenging. But fortunately enough, I was always surrounded by a bunch of amazing people that you can see right here on the screen. Um, and every single one of them contributed in their own equal ways uh, to make it uh, for us to come this far. Uh, from the early days when we launched Ignited Space, uh, the guys that got together, Samindra, Hasrita, uh, who stayed back, brainstormed, coming up with new activities, 
to all the instructors that we have right now, all the management uh, members we have, uh, the operations teams, that has all made us mitigate this challenge of building a kick-ass team. And that's what we have. Okay, guys. So thank you so much for joining. I wish you guys have a good vacation tomorrow. Um, and uh, uh, thank you so much again. And hope to see you again someday with a different session on Ignite Space. Uh, and uh, again, if you guys have any questions and if you guys want to know anything else, feel free to email me. Uh, I've dropped in my email as a comment. All right. Good night.